Uh, welcome to part 26 of our multi-language uh, um, adventure game. So this is the Lua version where we're loading our game in from the file. Um, if you've just watched the Python version where it was running in a console and I was loading in um, a new game where there was a lot of description that that made it overflow it was kind of all messed up but um so what i'm going to do with this one is to run it in the built-in thing here so if i um just press the start to show you what uh what is happening what helps if you run it on game of course so let me just increase the font here well one Right, so debug mode is on. Do you want to disable debug mode? Yes, please. We all no, we don't actually know. We want to leave that on. So we've now got this menu popping up that allows us to choose um, one of two games. So I'm going to choose the second one, which is the school dot text. And this is where in Python it went kind of wrong because the console got full. And we couldn't see all of the debug information. Whereas here, of course, because we're running it in this larger um, area in the IDE, we've got the full listing of everything that is inside this text file. We've still got some minor problems in that this item required is shoving everything over here. But at least where we've got long descriptions, such as here, they're not doubling back on themselves and messing up the the appearance here. So that's still something that needs to be worked on, but at least you can see what it's supposed to show. So we'll press um, enter here. And uh, now it's, of course, asking for my name. Uh, doesn't really matter here. We've got a different choice of um, characters now. So here our mission is to defeat the bully and escape. So we've got different things in our menu now. So let me just drop that back down. And um, I'll stop it at this point so that we can step through and find out how it actually loads in from file. So let's clear the output window. We can drop that down a little bit now. So it all happens in game here. So when it asks us to go load the game, this area has now been changed quite considerably. So I'll put a stop button there and we'll go on to main and press the debug button there. Do we want to disable debug mode? I think we will for this point. So we've now got, it, we're in the game load game, so we're now running um, the Lua version of basically reading in a file. Uh, we're con clearing the console as before. We've got the working directory here using Lua's version of doing it, uh, which is kind of clever. Um, I found this when I was searching through Stack Overflow and others. How on earth do I get the equivalent of the, of the uh, working directory? And you are using this p open, which is kind of getting um, it's opening a file and piping or sending the output of that file to the console. Um, then it's calling cd, which is change directory. And then read with that uh, star L. I don't, to be honest, quite know how it works, but it does. It reads the, um, the, the sort of current working directory, which is dead handy. Um, then we set up a load file name as empty. And then the load path is this one, stroke games, which is up here. So. <clears throat> Then it's going to get 
the next thing to do is to, is to get the files which are in this path. As you can see, there's only two of them. So we're going to pass it the load path and the, the console's operating system name, which is NT for Windows, of course, and load path, which is that uh, path there. So let's press F10 and we can go into that. Now, I found this again online. Um, I've given the link to where I found it this time. And um, it's, uh, again, we're doing a similar thing. We are using IOP open. Uh, if it's in Windows, we're using the dir command, which is um, to get the directory. And then by using this um, giving it the path where we want to read the directory from, and then the B switch, which returns directories, uh, is it directories only or files only? I can't remember, but it's some switch that's used in the um, Windows uh, command prompt uh, using um, DIR that will um, allow you to get this. So this takes a bit of research to find this, but we got there. So we're going to open that and it will give us this file um, and then the file lines is what we're now going is kind of an uh, I suppose a table in memory but we it doesn't say that it's a table but it, it's behaving in a sort of similar way so we're going to go through those that that file which has been opened and the, the, the input has been piped in somewhere, presumably into memory, uh, and it's then going to give us the uh, file names. So if we press F10, so the file list is now got default game text in it. And then we go through it again. There we are, it's gone through them. And school.txt. So, don't know how it works, magic presumably, but we've got default game text and school.txt in our um, file list, which was a, a table that we created up here. And then, of course, we're going to close the file that we opened in order to get this information and uh, return the, the file list. So, let's close the file and return the file list. So now we're going to get the um, the load file name from the game load menu function, which we're about to call by passing in the current working directory, the list of files, and the row, of course, which so minus one because we're working in the console here, not in the console, in the IDE. So F10, and then we want to um, use the keyboard menu as before to select which uh, game that we're going to load in. So if I hit that one, press there, type the number of your choice. Uh, this time let's put in the default game text because we know what that one looks like. So we'll press one. Let's come up to here. So it's going to return that directory with choice of one, which is uh, default game text. So let's return that. So the load file name we now know. Um, we're going to clear the console and then we're going to see if we can load from file. And that's the bit that I really need to step through with you. So let's press F10. Now load from file is quite long. If you've watched the Python version, you'll get some idea of how this works. So let me show you the file, uh, default games text, just increase the font. So this is similar to the way that the Windows INI file, the old INI file from donkeys years ago, used to be put in. You've got item.name equals whatever, and if it's not equal to anything, you just leave it like that, or you can give it a default value. Um, and then we've got uh, item dot description craft items uses container, and then it repeats name description craft uses item container, and so on. And then we've got the same with weapon. 
down here name description craft items uses container we've got the enemy name description health strength and drop item and then location name description etc so this is the reason i did it like this rather than using json xml uh, even csv is that i felt this was easier for somebody to manually create this file because it's a bit difficult to mess it up as long as you remember to put item dot uh, name description craft items uses and container for each of the items then um, it's, it's quite difficult to mess it up uh, anything that needs to be uh, there's two or more of them is separated with semicolons so that these will be separated out uh, which i'll be showing you how it does that so that's how we're reading this in from a, a custom text file so it's not the kind of normal formats that we you would use simply to make it easier to hand craft a game file right so where are we uh so we, we are now going to load that from the file we're actually up here so we've got this um little built-in similar to in Python where we had the the private functions uh, we just find the Python file for you just to remind you uh, where was that now that was in game and then there we are so in the load from file in Python that's our function we have these two private functions that are sub functions inside here so we have a similar process in here that we have this little table called lib short for library and then we've got library fix int and library fix list which are two functions here which are used only by the load from file function so we'll sh show how those work shortly so as we step through we're going to skip those and then we're going to um put a local some local variables in here um, and then uh, we're going to step through if I press F10 we're going to go through the lines in the file name lines um, so we've already if you remember we've already um, got the file name and this is kind of Lua's way of um, reading a file it's io.lines file name and then it's going to insert into a table all the lines in that file so what I'll do is I'll skip to here and let it do its stuff there we go and then our content table has now got obviously it's only showing the first few lines because it doesn't show them all but you've got basically the entire file has been read into this uh, table so now we're going to go through each of those and extract the, the data from them. So down here we've got our, our pairs, as we've used before, uh, the table content. So for each one of those, we're going to go through and get uh, the data out of it. So let's put it down to here and press that. So now we're going to extract the data. So the first line is item dot name equals key card so that was the first line that it pulled out of the file this bit here is to remove leading trailing white spaces and new line characters um, so it's kind of quite a nice neat little um, thing here so let's use that it's a, bit, a built in um, Lua function so that our line has now got has kind of been cleaned up a little bit uh, now we're going to split that line using the equal sign so that the at the moment the line has uh, sorry what I meant to show you was look the original line has item dot name equals key card and then there's a space after it whereas clean line has item dot name equals key card with no spaces after it so it's removed the new line character it's removed trailing spaces which is quite uh, quite handy 
Uh, now we're going to split that using the equal sign. So our um, clean line is item.name equals key card. So it'll split it into two portions, which will be stored in the table parts. So let's press uh, F10. So parts contains item name, item.name rather, and key card. Then the next step is to um, get a temporary variable which is going to split the first part so parts one is item dot name so we want to split that using the dot character so that will split it again let's go into f10 so the temp now contains item and name so we can now set up our object property and values using the parts and temp that we've already created so if i step through all of those now till we get to here there we go so we've now got our object is item our property is name and our value is key card uh, this bit here just corrected it in case it was nil so um we've now got enough to start creating our, um, our item object so if the item is, if the object is item which it is so we'll step into that uh, if the property equals name which it does we're now going to set this variable name equal to value so name is now key card this has now shot back to up here, so it's going through the um, the next uh, line and it's going to go through it again. So if we step through once more, so this time we've got our value is a magnetic strip card, the property is description and the object is item. So you can see it's going to loop through everything in our text file until it gets to the container and then it's going to add it to the using the add to items function which we have used before and that will create an actual object using that so let's make it go down to here we can disallow that one continue right so we've now got uses zero craft items empty description a magnetic uh, strip card container empty now we're going to add to items as we did when we were using the default items so this is going to work in exactly the same way once it's completed that it'll go through the next set of lines in the file until it reaches the weapon so if i just show you the default game text again so it's going to go through each of these items and then it will come down to here and then we've got a weapon and so it will then do exactly the same thing as we were doing except the object now is weapon and it's going to go through and get all the details out of it now the one thing that i skipped last time and i want to get this time is the fix int and fix list which are these little library things that we put at the top um don't think they get much out of weapon uh let's do that from the location because i know that there's some items in some of the locations so if i put a stop point there and then in the player we've got one for health so we'll put a stop point there okay so let's undo anything further up that we don't need there we go and press the key here so we're now into our object is location the property is items that are in the location and we're now going to fix the value which is a key card so let's press f10 and it's going to jump up to now these little kind of private um, functions that are part of load from file so it's it's got the value which is key card and it says here if the value is not equal to an empty string which it isn't then it's going to split using the uh, semicolon 
So the value, of course, doesn't have a semicolon in it. So in other words, it will just return value. So let me just press uh, F10. So that will, of course, vanish off the face of the earth. But you can see that we've got, um, if I press the F10 again, uh, and down here somewhere, location. So items is now a key card inside the uh, curly braces because it's now it's no longer just a string from a file. It's actually uh, within our table. Uh, finally, when we get to the uh, end of the locations, it will add it as before into the locations um, dictionary. So the next thing I wanted to stop at was the uh, list down here. So let me untick that one and we can see how it fixes the fix integer. So we'll go to that one. OK, so it's now going to try and fix the player health. The value is empty string. So we don't actually we didn't give in the file. We didn't give the player a, a value. Uh, so let's press uh, F10. So it's gone up to fix uh, int. Now, the value is, of course, an empty string and the default value was given down here. When we called it, which was uh, 60, if I can find it, we are value 60, value 60. So we're giving it a default value of um, of 60. Uh, where are we in the fix? Uh, in yep. So what we're going to try and do now is to convert our value into a number. Now with uh, Lua, if you do to number, and it's a and it's not something that can be converted, you just get nil. So if we press F10, then we will see that convert is nil because it didn't convert. F10 again. If the convert is nil, then we're going to refer the, return the default, which is 60. If we had passed in a value that can be converted, then we would have got the converted value out. So let's press uh, F10 again. And there we're going. So that's given ourselves a a default value of health of 60 because we didn't actually put it in the file. So if we had gone down here, where are we? Player health, left it to naught, strength, left it to naught. So uh, really perhaps in an ideal world, we should have put in a value here, but it doesn't matter for the purposes of what we're doing here. So that shows you how we are loading in from a text file and giving it actual um, values into the objects. We're translating a text file into objects, which is quite neat. Uh, finally, when it gets to the end of here, it's going to check the locations as it did before, which will just make sure that the, the locations correspond with the key names that are being given. The only thing that is not being checked at the moment is when we load in the, um, the player, the items, the weapons, we're not checking them at all. So there could be errors in there. So that's something that perhaps needs to be improved. But uh, it's working for the time being. So this is all going as it did before. Um, there's no real changes now to the rest of the menu system, etc. Um, so I just wanted to show you how we can load in from file and how easy it is to write a file. So if I do that one and we just, this is a, a different one. Um, now the this one won't work. It, it'll load in okay, but it won't work because uh, I'll show you why. One of the locations that we've got is which one is it now? It's the stairwell, no office. No. Location description, stairwell, office. Here we go. Yeah, right. To get into the office, we need a key retriever. Now, the key retriever. If we go back to the items, uh, see if we can see a key retriever. There we go. 
The key retriever is made from paper and wire. Now wire, if I can find wire, in here somewhere, okay wire is made from pliers and coat hanger. So in, all, in order for this game to work we have to find the coat hanger, find the pliers and craft a wire from these two items here and then from the wire and the paper to craft a key retriever. So of course at the moment we don't have a means of crafting anything so that's something we'll need to add in so I was originally going to say this was the final part and that's, that's kind of it that's the end of the game but I've, I really need to add one more section which is allowing us to craft items and at the same time I'm going to tidy up and really sort out the interface so that it looks a bit nicer especially when running in a console where we've got long lines that stretch right the way across I want to uh, to make that look a lot um, a lot neater so uh, that's the lower version with some interesting things of how to read um, directories uh, without importing third-party libraries. So uh, there we go. Uh, that's enjoyed.